Hello everyone, I'm going to show you how to use, or optimize I should say, WordPress SEO plugin. So here we are in the dashboard for the plugin after it's been installed and activated. So uh, this is just in a dashboard. This is clicked by default. We want to uncheck that because it'll uh, enable the advanced part for us, which I'll show you in a second. We'll go to titles and meta here. And we want to uh, no index the subpages of archives. WordPress by default creates a lot of archives and we we don't want those to be indexed. It's best practice is not to. If you know what they are and you want them to be indexed, by all means keep that unchecked. Under the home page here, you could uh these are all the users for this account. I mean this WordPress install. Uh you can either select one of the users and under the user there'll be a box where it will show Google Plus. Now if you link your Google Plus account here, update your profile, come back into here, and select your your name from here, it'll it'll uh, come up, it'll allow you to attribute your posts to your Google Plus account so it'll it'll you can come up for a rich snippet for that author. So that's pretty useful. Uh, and then also if it's a business page that you have a Google Plus business page you can link that here so that's pretty useful and I highly recommend uh, doing that so well let's actually do that let me go to or what.com slash bus this is actually it's at or I can just search for that it's medtech there it is and we'll just this is the link right here not the slash posts but this long string of numbers and then this is if we go to this link now if I paste that in it'll bring me right to the home page of my Google Plus business page so that's what we're gonna want we'll paste that there we'll save the settings then under post types uh, the posts most likely we're going to want those indexed pages we're going to want indexed media but you probably don't want that indexed WordPress by default makes Im uh, each image its separate page and we don't want those indexed because there's no content on there so we'll go over here to taxonomies by the way it, it saves your uh, checks throughout all of these so you can just save it once at the end categories we want for this particular site I don't want them indexed most likely you probably do it's better if you have a long, uh, long-standing site to see if the categories are already indexed in Google. You can just simply type site colon and then your site, and it'll do a search in Google only for your site. So that's useful. You can go through here, see if if those pages, those category pages, are indexed. If they are in fact indexed and uh, you have Google Analytics set up. You can see if there's any traffic coming there. Uh, and then you can, you know, strategically check this off or not. I'm going to check it off for this. Uh, format should be checked off by default. If it isn't, I suggest checking that off. Author archives. Since this is a, a business blog page, I don't, there is no author attribution. So we're going to uh, check both of these off because you want to disable the author archives and no index any author pages uh, but if it's if this was a blog and where you're doing posts then uh, you know obviously you wouldn't check this off because you would be picking uh, one of these and if you're gonna pick one of these then you keep this unchecked data date archives leave it as is and that's it for that and then as far as uh, the default template for your posts and your pages see how it says title in here separator site name if we go over here to help you can see which uh, code here represents what piece of data and so you could custom make your own uh, title that's automated so that you don't have to go into each page and, uh, and uh, manually uh, make the titles which could save some time if uh, if you do it correctly so we'll save settings for that I'm gonna skip over social we'll go to XML sitemaps now this is where something I actually already have this set up but you probably want to ping yahoo and ask.com doesn't hurt we want to exclude the media attachments from 
the uh, because we don't want them in our sitemap I don't want those to be coming up as pages and then all three of these are checked off uh, as well by default I believe these aren't but if you're basically when we were in titles and meta if you're gonna check off no index for categories you're gonna want to check this off too same thing for media for tags for format that's something that uh, actually let's go back into titles and meta and see if the tags yeah we want to no index tags as well so note that and that's kind of it everything else you guys can kind of go through those are the important things I believe the RSS if you have feed burner this is already uh, kind of given to you in that but if you want I know that feed burner is probably most it's not confirmed yet but it's probably going to be shutting down since Google Reader is and feed burner hat is kind of linked to that and hasn't been updated in a while so yeah so you might want to prepare for that and this is something where it'll it'll put content before each post feed and after so you can put like share links and things like that here you can put a welcome message here and so it's useful like that and an attribution like this post like if someone else is gonna uh, pull your feed into their site it'll have a link and the uh, a link to your blog so that you get credit for it so that's very useful as well and remember when we unchecked this the advanced part let's say we go to a page the advanced part allows us to no index specific pages so if there's a page like the privacy policy or something that you don't want indexed the contact page even you know you just don't want that indexed it uh, doesn't mean it's not gonna follow the links because well, you can also no follow any links so if you do no index no follow that's that's the uh, the greatest kind of uh, no no for a robot to not go through but if you do no index follow uh, all the link juice will still pass through the page but it's not gonna be indexed it's not gonna eat up any of the the link juice I believe I could be wrong on that but uh, and then uh, there's some other options here that best leave default unless you really know what you're doing in specific circumstances. So the last thing I'm going to show you is how to hook up your XML sitemap, which I already did. You just click on this link here. It'll give you two separate sitemaps. I'll just show you how to do one and the other one you can do. So we're just going to copy the end of this URL here. If we go to google.com slash webmasters, this is something you have to sign up for separately and if you haven't already done it I'm actually gonna go back here and show you real quick on the dashboard uh, if you go to google.com slash webmasters and your site isn't signed up I suggest you click here add a site it'll take you through a process and you can actually put uh, the code here um, you'd have to go to alternate methods you'll see what I'm saying if if you actually go through the process you put the code here save settings and then go confirm it on Google Webmaster Tools and th this will save you some time in going into the code if you're not familiar with that. So that's that. Uh, let's X out of this. Oops. Okay, well. Okay. So here's this. We have that copied, right? And uh, let's log out of this. We'll log into the account that has. this particular site on it and we'll go down here and if you go to optimization sitemaps as you can see page slash page sitemap and slash post sitemap already posted but if you wanted to add another one you'd click here we would paste that thing in and you do submit sitemap and then it will come up as this so there see how there's two separate ones the post and the pages because uh, WordPress SEO separates them for you and so you can see if one if if 10 out of 10 pages are being indexed here and 10 out of 50 pages are being post uh, indexed here you can see obviously something's wrong with your post you might want to check that out and same for the vice versa with page sitemap so I think that's it everything should be set up if you guys have any questions feel free to leave in the comments and I hope you guys enjoyed I hope this was educational for you oh one last thing is let me show you uh, two links if you go to yoast.com resources and then WordPress SEO this is actually a walkthrough it's pretty technical but it's very uh, 
detailed and it shows you every little part of WordPress SEO. So this is kind of a brief overview of what he's going on, uh, what what Yoast is, is talking about here. Um, so that if you want to get in deeper, obviously you'd go here and, and read some. And the one other resource would be uh, Quicksprout. I'll leave the uh, link, but quicksprout.com slash the advanced guide to SEO. And you probably want to start at chapter one. And this basically uh, part of it, I think one part of it goes through uh, with the WordPress SEO plugin. And there's some really good uh, tips. Uh, it's just a short part, but the rest of this is really great too if you wanted to jump in here. So I think that's it. All right.